there guys, Tillis20 here and welcome to a brand new series on my channel. A lot of you guys know that I've been chipping away at this project for quite some time. This map has taken a fair amount of time to put together and the first few episodes, in fact I think probably the first month or so, is going to be all map creation because a massive focus for this project is going to be about the map. Similar to Marble Mountain, this series is going to be based on a whole region, not just one particular city. With Marble Mountain, I'm trying to include as much of California into this single map. This time around, we're going to go a little bit bigger and we're going to go Australia. I'm going to try and get the vibe and feel of Australia, the landscape, the cities, the places, into this single map. But just to make things even more difficult, we're going to go an island. And I've chosen an island for a couple of reasons. One big reason, Australia's an island, this is going to be an island, that was a no-brainer. Uh, but number two, I really can't stand borders. Like I always hate being able to see the edge of the map, flat earth, nothing beyond that point. It's kind of an immersion killer. And that's always bothered me with Marble Mountain. When you're in the middle or when you're looking at the city or at the mountain, it's great. But as soon as you look towards the edge of the map or you zoom out a little bit, it's very clear that there are borders and the immersion for me is gone. And that's not really such a factor when you're working on just a single city. But for me, I need to use all the space. So a lot of places for me in Marble Mountain are built right up to the edge of the map. And then that does make it really difficult to feel immersed within this area when you've got this very clear border right at the edge of this thing. And I figured out this really cool trick that if you were to hide the clouds, it turns all the fog to this blue color, which then gives the illusion that the ocean just continues. And then you've got this horizon that is created by this cube map and bam, you've got yourself an island that is surrounded by endless ocean. And then the really nice thing about having this island is that pretty much any angle you look at this map, it actually looks quite nice because there's no borders, there's no sudden drop off the earth and you can't see anything beyond that point. It's just this ocean that surrounds it and I really like that. Now, unfortunately, by creating an island, we have even more limited space, which means the way that I plan out this map has to be really particular and I have to be really cautious not to waste any of the precious space that we have so that I can make sure that we are capturing all the aspects of Australia that I want to include on this map. So to get ideas to how to do that, I had to turn to open world game maps because they are basically doing the same thing. I look at any open world video game and they are trying to embed many different concepts within that map, within this open space for their players to be immersed. You don't want anything to feel repeated or any dead space where players won't want to go because there's nothing there. And it's really interesting to see how um, a lot of these game developers create these open worlds. And there is very good reason why Rockstar are the top dogs when it comes to creating open world games. And it's because their maps are absolutely the best. Um, before I go down an absolute rabbit hole though of just talking about that topic, go and check out a video that Dark Space has made. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the description and a card up the top, but it's really great at just going through all the reasons why Rockstar are the top dogs when it comes to map development. And that whole aspect of map creation really fascinates me and I was really excited to go into this project with that same notion in my mind. No dead space, nothing repeated, every single area of my map, including every suburb that I create, should feel very different to anything else on the map so that nothing feels repeated, every area is unique, what makes up their uniqueness and also trying to make the map feel natural and flow as best as we can. I mean, that's going to be very difficult within the space that we have. It's obviously not going to be absolutely perfect, but the aim is to make the transitions between those different places flow and make sense and feel really nice and balanced. So with it being an island, there is going to be a big focus on the coastline and there's going to be a really big focus on different types of biomes. We're going to have a desert, temperate environments, tropical and some mountains and everything in between. And I really love that everything in between part where you have the mix between the different types of environments and how am I going to make that happen in a realistic way? How am I going to make the city feel big when you're in the city but then small when you're in some of the other parts of the map? and how you're going to make the desert seem so far away when it is actually still so close to the city, which is going to be a temperate environment. So all these factors 
I have to figure out and which is why we're spending probably about a month just working on the map and figuring out scale and how this thing is going to work. All this feels very familiar, right? I know I'm pretty much describing Marble Mountain, but look, Marble Mountain was started two and a half years ago and I'm going into this project in a very different mindset. With Marble Mountain, I kind of just was like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'll see how it goes. But to make a map that has such a huge focus on the way that everything interacts with each other and where scale and perspective plays such a huge role, it's really important to plan that stuff out first up and to get the map established to exactly how you want it to start to take shape. And the benefit of that is that we're going to have this really nice looking map very early on in the series. Whereas Marble Mountain, I don't know if you guys remember, but it took about two years for us to get the map looking the way that we wanted it to. And it's not just the landscape that I want to be tackling first, but I also want to be ticking off the highways and the rail infrastructure and the metro and where the airport's going to go, uh, the road layouts. We're going to be doing all that sort of stuff very early on so that we get a really realistic looking city and making sure that we're utilizing the space in the most realistic way possible. And what you've been seeing me do so far on screen is do a lot of trial and error. So everything that you see me doing right now, this is not the map that we're going to be using. But this is whereabouts I started, just diving in, trying to trial out, mold some mountains, do a bit of coastline, figure out where the city is going to go, but it just was not working. And you know what? This isn't even where I first started. The first thing I started to do when I started this series was I just started going into the Steam Workshop and finding any assets that I thought was going to fit within this series. So finding assets that were similar to an Australian architectural style, so not just Australian assets, but assets that I thought were going to work for this series and just making a big collection full of all the things that I thought I was going to use. And then jumping into game and testing them out, seeing if the buildings were going to fit in with the skyline and the city that I wanted. If some of the buildings were too tall, then I had to remove them because we're going for scale and I didn't want any buildings that were going to be too tall, that were going to make the city look very small compared to the skyline or even the mountains surrounding it. If I had subscribed to some assets that were very similar, I would just choose the best looking one or I would remove assets that just didn't turn out to be that great looking. And that whole process of culling is really great because then you start a collection and a series off with a pretty small asset count and then you are kind of free to subscribe and add extra ones as you go along. And then the next step of setting up the map was to figure out what map theme I was going to use. And this is always going to be a challenge because I am going to be having a desert and a temperate environment and tropical and forests and a whole bunch of different types of biomes. I really needed quite a versatile map theme that was going to give me a huge variety of different tools to use. So of course, map theme mixer mod is the best option because then I can combine different types of map themes trialed all these different types for the grass texture and what the desert was going to look like and seeing what sort of crossover I could get. So could I use the deserts for the tops of the mountains to make them look a little bit drier? What could I do for underneath the forest? What could I do for around the coastline? So assets and map theme ticked off. It's now for the hard part, figuring out the map. And like I said earlier, going into game and just trying to form some mountains and some landscape just by hand was not going to work. I really needed to think this thing out before jumping into the game. So I ended up using Terrain Party, which is an application, a web-based application that allows you to find different hype maps around the world and import them into the game. And originally I just was going to find an island that was similar to what I wanted and then I could just change it within the game but because we are going for something that is so specific I needed to do still more editing prior to jumping into the game. So what I ended up doing was I used Photoshop to splice some mountains and some landscapes together to get the perfect type of landscape or at least a landscape that I could then use and change around when I was back in game. I ended up finding some really great mountains in New Zealand which is very typical of an Australian finding some great mountains in New Zealand. <laughs> And these ones were great because the difference between the height, so the lowest height and the highest point and the ratio which it made that, uh, that change was really quite small, it was quite a scaled down mountain already which is what I needed because using the height maps of other mountains that you might find in New Zealand 
actually would just take up the entire space of the island and I couldn't do that needed something that was much much scaled down. And by the way, this is not going to be the only time I reference New Zealand. A lot of this project will also be based on cities and towns and the landscape of New Zealand. And in particular, the main city that we end up building is going to be inspired by a lot of the landscape you find in a couple of New Zealand cities. So um, yeah, look forward to that. So I grabbed a bunch of these mountains, I cropped them out and I used them to just drag them around to make different types of formations on this map. I had also figured out where the borders of my island were going to sit and I just was trying to figure out where the city would sit, where I'd have different types of biomes and just figuring out how this would take shape. And it was a lot of trial and error, I did a lot of, um, you know, trialing it over here and then going into game and working on that for a couple of hours and then realizing no this mountain doesn't fit here and this water source can't be there and just changing around then go back in game there's a lot of back and forth and this lasted quite a long time because the mountains play such a huge part in changing the biomes and making so that we have different types of transitions and blocking off the city from the rest of the map as well the city has to be surrounded by these mountains because uh, they are going to create that border between the natural environment, farmland, deserts, and the city. And they were going to have different types of perspectives. So we really needed these mountains to frame the city. And also how the city was going to take shape. Like what's the size of the city going to be? And in fact, that is one of the most difficult parts about doing map creation is it's really hard to get an idea of perspective when you're just working with the landscape because you have no buildings, you have no roads, um, particularly in those early stages, we have no references. So what I would do is I'd map out these uh, these mountains and this land and then I'd put down some trees and I'd put down some roads and I would have these pre-made areas of the downtown, like roughly the size of the downtown, maybe a bit smaller. And I also had um, an outline of the general idea for the airport and what that might look like. Um, so then I can place these down using Move It. I'd have them saved and I'd just import them into each map. And then I could just shuffle them around and think, okay, is this, are we going for the right scale here? Is this going to be big enough? Is this too small? Have I left enough room for these places, these most important big areas? And that way I could get a bit of an idea of where things are going to sit. Something that I was very adamant about uh, was I wanted there to be a continuous road that stretched around the island. Uh, and that road was going to go across a bridge, the main bridge within the city. And that made it really difficult because it meant that I couldn't just have the city off to a corner somewhere. It had to be part of this whole continuous circuit. I don't know why I wouldn't that circuit, but I, now that we do have that, I really love it. It's this really nice idea that you can start at one point on the map and go around the whole island. There's no drop off for the highway. It doesn't just drop off the edge of the earth. It continues, goes around the whole thing. And that's very similar to Australia. You can start at one point in Australia, travel around the whole of Australia and go back to the very same point. And I think that's a really nice touch. Now we're starting to get a little bit closer to the finished product. And when I say finished, I mean, finally being able to work in game and work on these mountains. Uh, but one aspect that was really working was planning out where I wanted different areas to go, uh, just writing just text whereabouts each element was going to go and then I could drag them around and think, okay, do I want that there? Is that going to work around here? Um, one part that was really frustrating was the airport because building an airport outside of the 25 tiles causes a bunch of problems. So I had to find a place where I could put the airport and being so large and having so much infrastructure around it and also placing an airport in a realistic place you know, I don't want it to be around mountains or I don't want it to be flying over the city. Thankfully, I did find the perfect location for it and everything just started to fit into place. All that trial and error paid off because the map was finished, at least this portion of it. <laughs> now it's time to jump in game and actually start terraforming a little bit more because as you can see, some of these mountains are a little bit all over the place. There are some bad splices where I've try to put mountains together in Photoshop and the landscape is looking a little bit strange in areas but that's all fine because a lot of this is going to change. This is just where the main bulk of the mountains are going to go and now I can start figuring out how the rivers are going to take shape where the city is going to perfectly sit and where I can start thinking about this road, this bloody road that's going to stretch around the entire island. 
Now we're starting to spend a little bit of time just blending in these mountains, fixing up some of the imperfections that we have from Photoshop and just starting to get a bit of a feel for how I can start terraforming this place because at this stage I'm just trialing things out, seeing how this thing's going to start to take shape. But as you can see, these mountains are very important because they will be the barriers between different areas and they're going to frame a lot of the places that we end up building within these locations. And you're going to start to see where I have ideas of towns to sit and where I do want particular things to go, but I am also keeping it fairly open to what could potentially sit here. So I have some ideas, but it is going to be as much of a collaborative project as it is something that I am going to be building. Because I do love that process of getting ideas from you guys and then putting them within the map. I don't want to just be purely doing things that I have ideas for. And on that same notion, I know I'm basing this on Australia and parts of New Zealand too, but that doesn't mean I want to do recreations. I don't want to rule things out. We're going to keep this very open. So far as I've been working on this series, I've been looking around South Africa, seeing the different landscape around Cape Town. I checked out some of the airports around Spain because I wanted an airport that was around water and I was trying to figure out how to make that thing work. So I think I went to Barcelona on Google Earth and found some ideas and even Wellington in New Zealand. So it's very open. I don't want to just completely rule things out because it's not Australian, we're not doing any recreations, I'm not going to rebuild really Sydney, I'm not going to rebuild Melbourne. There will be places obviously inspired by some cities and places in Australia and New Zealand but I'm going to keep it quite open to interpretation and I will be open to any parts of the world uh, for different ideas. Alright, one last thing before I start talking about the final things that I'm doing on screen. You might notice that there is no name for the series at this stage because I am really struggling. So I'm going to put it to you guys. I have an idea in my head of what I want to call this, but I'm going to ask you guys first and we will come up with this together. The idea is to call the series whatever this place is called. I want you to think about this as a region, not just a country, not just an island, but uh, a place that you can go to. They can travel around that has lots of different areas within it what should we call it? Part of me kind of wants to name it the Gold Coast. Now that is already a name of a place within Australia uh, but what I do like about that name is that I think it really best describes the coastline of Australia and I think it does have a bit of a ring to it but it is already a name of a place. I mean everywhere is the name of a place. So if you have any name suggestions, I like the Gold Coast. Do you like the Gold Coast? Do you have other name suggestions? Hit me up in the comments section, I would really like to get some ideas for names of places, even the city that we build, names of places, I want to name all the mountains around here, like we're going to name everything. A big part of this project is that everything should feel quite unique and you should be able to tell all the mountains and different areas within this if you are following along with this series. And as part of that, it would be nice to have names for these places and really detail these places up so that we do feel like they have very distinct characteristics. So that's the premise for this series. That is the idea. It's an absolute ramble of a first episode, so apologies for that. Uh, one last thing that I'm doing on screen is I am creating this underground network to get cars to and from this island. I didn't want to have any bridges going across here or any land that was going to connect up. I really like that it's its own separate place and we're going to try and keep it that way so no bridges are going to be coming over here instead. We've got these two bridges on either end of the map and they're actually connected up to these islands that are sitting way off into the fog so you don't even notice that they are there. Uh, and then these underground tunnels that connect up to this interchange and I've purposely placed this around where the city is going to be so there's going to be a bit of traffic around this area which I kind of like and then when you sort of get into the outer edges of the map where there's a little less density, there's more smaller towns and it's more nature. Shouldn't really have any cars just driving around randomly. And then I have done the same for the train line. So there is two train lines coming from either end. And of course we will have cargo coming via airport and via boats and passenger services like that too. So it won't be just excluded to this, but I think that this is going to give us enough flexibility in terms of people coming to and from this area, but then also it should feel like this map is just a standalone island. 
But you know, that pretty much does it for this episode and for the map. I mean, this is the bare bones of it. Some mountains are going to stay here, some parts are going to change. Um, in fact, quite a lot of it changes. Uh, this desert that you can see is going to shrink quite a lot. And in fact, it's really going to represent more of an outback dry area rather than just a desert. Uh, it's something very different to Marble Mountain. It won't just be this like, big desert that sits out in this area. If you're enjoying the content and want to see more stuff like this on my channel, there's a link to my Patreon page. It's a really great way to um, help support what I do here and to allow me to keep such a rigid and tight schedule. I'm always releasing episodes every week, even sometimes two a week, and that's really thanks to the support of my patrons. And I do want to give a special shout out to some of them, Josh Goring, Miko, Abelay, Chris411, Thompson Applin, John Reed, and Joel Picaro. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. I do really appreciate it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Catch ya!